friends, it's Lisa, and welcome to week two for the Magical Readathon. I'm so excited to keep reading. Week one was very successful. I just hit myself in the face. <laughs> but week one was definitely a success. I am doing the Star Whisperer career, which means I have five prompts that I have to do, and I did two in week one. So I'm doing really well. I only have three left to do, and I think I'll be able to manage that in the three weeks we have left of the readathon. But I do need to pick my next read for the readathon because I'm currently reading A Lady for a Duke by Alexis Hall, and this is not on my TBR for the readathon. So I do want to pick up something else that's actually working towards completing my calling for the readathon. I may actually see because there is like the side quest that you can do and I know it's like it's like this setup where you read a little bit about something and then you make a decision and based off of that decision you get a prompt and then you read a book and then that forwards you on to a different path and then you have to read something and you get a prompt and I may try and do that. I know that that's not necessarily something that you have to do all in April. That's something that G said you could do throughout the whole year like rest of the year so I might look at that and see if this could count for the first decision or prompt that I get. I don't know. I haven't decided if I'm going to do any of the side quests at all anyways, so I may see if this can work. I don't know though. But yeah, this isn't as of right now counting towards the magical readathon. So I thought we could talk through what I'm planning on picking up next for my TBR. I do think that what I want to pick up next, I may have to change my TBR for the readathon, which like surprise, surprise, I'm making changes to my TBR. We all expected that this was going to happen at some point. <laughs> so I believe it's for the lore class that is to read a book with a map in it. And for that, I originally picked out Bitter Blue by Kristen Kishore. This is the third book in the Graceling series. And I still do really want to read this. I really want to get like caught up on the series and read all of the ones I have left to read. So I might still end up reading this at some point this month, but I think I might swap it out for the readathon because listen, it's a smart idea. <laughs> I think you all will support me. Basically, recently, I think it was back in March, I read Crier's War by Nina Varela. I did a reread of that book because I wanted to finally pick up the sequel, Ironheart. I read Crier's War for the first time back in 2020 and then never picked up the sequel. So I did a reread to like get familiar again with the characters and the world and the politics and everything. And now it's fresh in my head. So it feels like this is something I should pick up sooner rather than later. And it has a map in it. So I'm thinking that I might switch out Bitter Blue and read this instead, read Ironheart instead. It just seems like the smarter option. And then I'll finally be finishing this series and I just, I don't know, like I was saying, like everything from Cryer's War is fresh in my head. It just feels like the smart idea to pick this up sooner rather than later because I don't want to have to reread Cryer's War again. I Not that I don't love that book, but it just makes sense to read this, I think, when everything from the world and the characters is fresh in my head. So I think I'm going to pick this up next. I think I'm going to switch out Bitter Blue and read this. And I think that this is going to be what I pick up for the Magical Readathon. I think this is going to be my next read for the Readathon. But yeah, I am excited to finally pick up Ironheart and finally finish this series. You would think for a duology, it's only two books. It would be easier for me to finish, but I'm just really bad at finishing series. <laughs> I am a little nervous to read it just because I have heard that people don't love this one as much as the first one, but we shall see what I end up thinking. But yeah, this is going to be what I pick up for the readathon next. Also, this week is the week that there are photo challenges over on Instagram. Basically, every day is a different prompt and you post a picture for that prompt for the readathon. And I feel like whenever there are photo challenges over on Instagram for readathons that I participate in, I'll do like the one that's like, post your TBR. And then I never do any of the other ones. <laughs> so this week I'm going to attempt to post a picture for every single photo prompt and photo challenge for this readathon this week. We'll see. I'm going to keep my fingers crossed that I can do it. I think I'm just going to have to have a photo shoot and get as many pictures like taken at once. And then I'll have a bit more success, I think, with posting them every day. I just, I don't know, I overthink my Instagram so much. I always enjoy posting to Instagram, like taking the pictures and editing them and posting them, even though my Instagram is nothing special, but I just enjoy the process of it. It's just the getting the inspiration and getting past the like overthinking stage to take the pictures. It's hard for me. I don't know why I overthink my Instagram and my Instagram stories so much, but we're going to try and get past that. And I'm going to try and post every day this week for the photo challenges. So I did post the one today, which was poster TBR. So check that off and we'll just see if I can actually keep up with that this week. Yeah, that'll be a fun little thing to do this week as well, the different photo challenges and also completing hopefully more prompts for the readathon. But at this point, let me know how you all are doing with the Magical Readathon, if you're participating, what your progress is, how many prompts you completed, what you're currently reading, or if you're not participating in the readathon, just let me know what you're currently reading anyways, because I want to know. <laughs>
taken them out yet but hey what's up I have spent this morning doing some bookstagram photo taking and editing I feel like the best way I think I was saying this yesterday with the photo challenges that are happening this week for the magical readathon the best way for me to be successful is to like take a bunch of pictures at once for the different challenges and then just have them ready to go throughout the week so that's what I've been doing I've taken a couple I took the one for today which is blue and teals and then I took the other another one for later on in the week but I'm gonna try I think and take them all today we'll see how it goes <laughs> and it's been really fun actually I forget like once I get over the like oh what do I take pictures of does anybody even care thing <laughs> once I get by that and I'm actually taking the pictures and editing them and like figuring out when I'm gonna post what I really enjoy the whole thing. Again, like I said, my bookstagram is nothing special. There are some beautiful bookstagrams out there, and mine is just not not on that level. But I do enjoy what I do for my bookstagram, so you would think that I would actually be more active and take more bookstagram pictures. But alas, I do not. But it's been a fun morning doing that. But as far as some reading updates go, I did start on Ironheart, which I switched out with Bitter Blue for the lore class and prompt, which is to read a book with a map in it. I I only got up to chapter three. I only read the first couple of chapters, which is on page 49. So not very far, but this does kind of jump right back into where we left off in Cryer's War. I think this book, I think it said it was like not even two weeks after the events of the end of Cryer's War, but you don't really miss anything. So that's been nice to kind of just like get right back into the story where we left off. And in case you do not know what this duology is about, uh, in this world there are humans and Otome, and the Otome are created. They're very human-like, and they were created to basically be like humans, but just kind of superior, so they are a little bit stronger, and they don't have to, like, eat food and drink water. Like, they don't survive off of the same things. They literally just need this thing called Heartstone to survive. And in this book, there's a lot of unrest between the Otome and the humans. The Otome have quickly become the rulers of this world. They originally were serving the humans, and now that has reversed. So we have Cryer, who is the princess. She is an Otome, and her father is the king. And we have Ayla, who is a human, and she is a part of the rebellion against the Otome. And Ayla really wants revenge on the king because he is responsible for killing her family. So her plan for revenge is to kill Cryer. But then she is given the opportunity to get closer to Cryer. And the two of them kind of realize that they have similar goals and they know certain information that the other doesn't. And they actually would be better if maybe they worked together. That does cause a bit of a problem because, you know, one is an Otome, one is a human. Their kind are not supposed to get along with the other. And it gets very complicated when like, romantic feelings start happening between the two of them and it's just really fun it's like a true enemies to lovers story the world is really interesting i love the discussions on like otome versus humans and like the discussion of like humanity and what it means to be human and just like the politics and everything there's just a lot of really great things in this series so i'm excited to finally be picking up the sequel it did do a pretty good job of like recapping what happened in crier's war in the first two couple of chapters i think i still would have been a little lost if i didn't reread it. I'm just I'm glad I reread it to get like the full context of everything and to be honest I reread Cryer's War a few weeks ago when I was already starting to forget some things just because I have a pea brain so it was nice to kind of get those moments in the first couple of chapters that were like recapping what had happened to completely like refresh my memory on all of the little details and what is like the most important things to remember so yeah so far I'm enjoying it but like I said I'm only two chapters in so we'll see how the rest of it goes but I'm liking it so far but yeah I think that that is going to be it for this update I'm gonna get back to to taking some bookstagram photos and I'm very excited to see how they all come out hopefully okay again like I said I'm no professional photographer my bookstagram is nothing special but I'm having a good time <laughs>
well today is um quite a warm day we went from one extreme to the other that's just spring in new england for you it was you know not cold but like i was you know wearing sweatshirts and fuzzy socks last week now today i'm sweating i'm in a tank top and shorts it's like 80 something degrees out what when why <laughs> there's just no time to adjust but that's fine i should be used to it by now i have lived in new england my whole life i should not be surprised that spring basically doesn't exist and we just go from winter to summer very quickly some year i won't be so surprised but i don't know when that will happen <laughs> but because it is a little bit warmer today i want to update you pretty quickly just so i can close my blinds block out the sun again and make it so it's not getting too warm in here but yeah i wanted to update very quickly on reading progress i don't have the book surprise surprise i started a clip when i didn't actually have the book in my hands but i wanted to update on Ironheart, which I'm now a little over halfway. I think you can kind of tell this is what I've read so far. I'm on page 243, and I think this book is just like just over 400 pages, so I think I'll be able to finish this pretty soon. I know whenever the magical readathon is happening, there is one weekend where there is a 24 hour readathon that happens, and that's this weekend. So I think I'm going to try and participate as much as I can. I will probably watch some reading sprints and just try and read a lot this weekend and hopefully get this done. And so far, my thoughts on this, I'm definitely not loving it as much as I did the first one. And I think I really just set myself up for failure here because I, when I reread Crier's War last month, I still enjoyed it, but I didn't love it as much as I did the first time I read it. And I just wish that I had read this sequel right after reading the first book because I read the first book in September of 2020. Guess when this book was released? September of 2020. <laughs> so I just kind of wish that I had read this like closer to when I read the first one and I feel like it had just gotten like the most out of this duology and maybe enjoyed it more. I still liked Crier's War when I reread it last month. I gave it four and a half stars but I just didn't love it as much as I did the first time around and this book in particular I'm still enjoying but I'm just not loving it as much. Throughout both of these books you get Crier and Ayla's perspectives and at the beginning of this book I do think it's interesting where the two of them are and I don't know how much to say because this is the sequel so I don't want to spoil anybody but I do think it's really interesting where they are and how it kind of mirrors each other and like mirrors each other in the way that like of the first book where the first book where they were at like it's just very interesting to see these characters in the positions that they're in but I will say like I have definitely preferred being in Cryer's perspective throughout this book so far not because I dislike Ayla I like her character I just don't feel like her perspective was as interesting. A lot of her moments and whenever we've been with her, a lot of what has been going on is a whole lot of nothing. It's just a lot of characters talking to each other. It's just her talking to different people, sharing information and trying to figure out what's happening. And it's just not a whole lot that's happening. And neither, like Cryer's War wasn't super action-packed. There were a couple of scenes that were a little bit more uh, exciting. There was a little bit more plot going on, but it wasn't like, you know, super like fast paced twist and turns so much like action scenes or anything like that it was very like slow so I'm not surprised that it's still like this in the sequel but I just feel like Ayla like nothing was really going on with her and there are a couple of characters that Ayla's with that I just don't I just don't really care about them um that's one of the things I said with Cryer's War when I read it like reread it last month is I wish like some of the side characters were a little bit more developed because I feel like that would make me more invested in these other characters. There's one character specifically, it's Ayla's like best friend Benji. I think he's so annoying. <laughs> so yeah, I just feel like Ayla, nothing's really been happening. She's just been talking to people that I just don't care about or like find irritating. So it's like it has been the most fun being in her perspective. So I definitely have been preferring being with Cryer and seeing what she's up to. And like I said, I am over like halfway and there was something that I knew would eventually happen in this book. I was just kind of like, I've been waiting for it to happen. And I was starting to get to a point where I was starting to get annoyed and I was like, okay, when is this thing gonna happen? And then it happened in literally the next chapter. So she almost lost me. I was almost a little annoyed with this book and was just kind of starting to get impatient, but I think everything that I wanted to happen happened at the right time, so that worked out. <laughs> so I'm hoping now that I'm a little over halfway through the book, the thing that I was waiting to happen has happened. I'm hoping that from this point onward, it kind of picks up a little bit. So yeah, so far I'm liking this, but I'm definitely not loving it as much as I did the first book. I feel like if I had to give it a rating right now, it'd be like a three and a half star, but I'm still liking it. I still like the characters. I still love Cryer and Ayla, and I like seeing what they doing in this book and what they're trying to accomplish and I definitely think there are pieces of certain things that are interesting. It's so hard to talk about 
without getting into spoilers. <laughs> but there definitely are things that are interesting to me and I do like these characters. So I'm excited to see how the story wraps up and how everything works out for them. But I definitely feel like I did myself dirty by not reading this earlier and reading it closer to when I read Cryer's War originally because maybe I would have liked it more. I don't know. But yeah, I'm hoping to finish this this weekend by the end of this weekly vlog. Um, and I think with the 24-hour readathon and me like trying to participate, I think I'll be able to do it and maybe even start on my next read for the readathon. I also am still reading A Lady for a Duke as well and I'm hoping with both of that book and this one I can finish both of them this weekend. So we'll see how it goes but yeah I'm gonna go so I can shut my blinds again and block out the sun and make it not so warm in here because it's warm. <laughs> All right hello it is now Friday. It is still hot. <laughs> yeah you know I really wasn't prepared for this weather. It's like on one hand it's nice because like serotonin you know but at the same time it's very warm. I genuinely like it is almost 80 degrees in this bedroom right now. That's very warm. I'm very warm. <laughs> but I do think it's supposed to cool down this weekend so that'll be nice. Um, but basically I just wanted to film a little quick check-in. I honestly have not done a ton of reading. I read a little bit last night like I read a little bit of both books but not a ton. Just wasn't really in the reading mood plus Taylor Swift did have a concert that was happening last night so I was sitting there refreshing Twitter all night instead of reading. <laughs> but yeah I'm hoping like I was saying I will this weekend be able to finish both of these. I definitely think I'll finish Ironheart because I'm pretty close to finishing. I have like 120, 130 ish pages left of this so I definitely think I'll be finishing this and hopefully this as well and yeah I mean we're doing well but I just haven't been in the biggest reading mood the past couple of days. But speaking of concerts, this morning, very excited, my friend got us five seconds of summer tickets. I'm so excited. <laughs> it was kind of a pain in the booty getting tickets so I'm glad that she was able to get them and I'm just I'm really excited to see them. I haven't seen them in so long. I feel like I've pretty much gone to every tour that they've done. I think I've missed like one or two and one of the ones I missed was the one that they did last year I think and that was the one that they had to reschedule from the panini if you will which I did have tickets for that tour but my date just didn't get rescheduled it just got cancelled so really good luck on my side. <laughs> so I haven't seen them before 2020. I think the last time I saw them was 2019 when they opened for the Chainsmokers. I bought tickets for the Chainsmokers for five seconds of summer that's love. <laughs> but yeah, I haven't seen them since then and that was 2019. So I'm really excited to see them this summer. I miss them so much and it's just gonna be really fun. I'm so excited. And yeah, I mean, I think really that's it. Oh, I did want to say as well that I have been keeping up with the Magical Readathon Instagram prompt thing, photo challenge thing. <laughs> I have posted five out of the five that have happened so far and I do have pictures for the next two days. So I think I'm going to post every single day for every single photo prompt for this readathon. I don't think I have ever done that. <laughs> so I'm really proud of myself for doing that and it's making me really love Instagram again. So I'm hoping that this week and like posting every single day this week for the readathon challenges that it will inspire me to continue to post more frequently onto Instagram. I don't think I'm going to be posting every single day like I have been this week for like the readathon but I definitely think that it has inspired me to keep up with my Instagram and maybe post a little bit more frequently. But yeah, very happy about that. And okay, it's hot, so I'm gonna turn my fan back on and end this clip now. All right, see you in a bit. <laughs> enjoy this time. <laughs> Sam can, can. <laughs> you little baby.
right, I'm going to quickly give some final reading updates before wrapping up this vlog, but I did want to quickly say that I did manage to post every single day for the Magical Readathon on Instagram, the different photo challenges. I did every single one. And I just think that that's neat. <laughs> I feel like that is the first and only time I've ever been successful in posting every single day for a photo challenges for a readathon. So I'm very happy with myself. It's also made me really excited to keep posting to Instagram, even though Instagram very clearly prioritizes reels and I find reels a little intimidating <laughs> because I posted every day for a week and I gained like two followers, which, you know, I feel like I could have also gained them by not posting because sometimes I gain followers when I'm not posting to Instagram. So I don't know. I feel like being consistent gets you nowhere unless it's reels, but I had a good time and that's what matters. <laughs> so it's made me excited to keep taking Instagram pictures and keep hopefully being a little bit more consistent on Instagram. But I have had my bookstagram account which by the way is linked below if you want to follow me, shameless plug. But I've had my bookstagram since I started my YouTube channel. I think I posted my first post to my bookstagram the day I posted my first YouTube video, which was back in June of 2019. So we're approaching four years, which is gross. But also the only thing that I feel like I've been consistent with, with my bookstagram in these four years is how inconsistent I am. <laughs> and the amount of times over these four years that I've said I'm going to be more consistent with my bookstagram and it doesn't happen, you know, it's fine. We're maybe this will be the time that it will stick. I don't know. <laughs> but regardless, I did post every day for the photo challenges. So success. Uh, anyways, reading updates. I did manage to finish both of the books I was reading this week in this vlog. I did finish A Lady for a Duke by Alexis Hall, and my thoughts on this will be coming in a vlog soon. I also did check the, um, the quest thing and like the very first prompt was to read a book with night on the cover or in the title and I don't think I can confidently say that this is nighttime so I don't think that this can count for that quest and to be honest I don't know if I'm gonna do any of the quest stuff that because that's a lot of extra bonus stuff that I just don't know if I'm gonna have time to do <laughs> but I did also finish Ironheart by Nina Varela which I am counting for the magical readathon this is for the lore prompt which is to read a book with a map in it and I finished this and I gave it four stars so I'm really happy that I did in the end end up enjoying this book I feel like the last time I really updated on this book I was a little over halfway and I was feeling like it was okay I was having a good time but I wasn't loving it as much as the first one and I still didn't love it as much as I did the first one obviously I gave that one four and a half stars upon the reread and this one I only gave a four but I still enjoyed it I do think the way that this story wraps up was very satisfying I feel like there were a lot of questions that I had throughout this duology and I feel very satisfied with how all of those things uh, got answered and just the way certain storylines ended and I don't know I just really liked a lot of the choices that Nina Varela made in this duology. There were a lot of really interesting reveals and twists that I did not see coming and so that made it really really interesting to see how it was all going to wrap up and see how these things were going to be handled. I will say I think my biggest issue with this book was the pacing. I definitely feel like the first half of this book was not as engaging as the second half. The second half things got a lot more interesting just getting the answers and seeing the certain reveals and twists and turns and where things went in the second half definitely was a lot more interesting. The first half was very slow and not a whole lot was happening and like I was saying I was preferring one perspective over the other. I do feel like the first half was just a little bit slow and there was just a lot of like characters talking but not enough of things actually happening. I will say this duology as a whole is not the most like action packed duology. Like there are certain scenes that are a bit more exciting. There is a bit more action in certain scenes but I do feel like overall a lot of the conflict is very much like based in the politics and there's a lot of conflict with that more so than like battle scenes and fight scenes and things like that so it is a more slower story I guess just like the duology as a whole but I do feel like the first half was just like very slow and was just basically characters talking to other characters and that was it <laughs> but it did pick up a lot in the second half and like I said I did find a lot of the way things wrapped up a lot of the reveals there was one reveal that I did not see coming at all and I do not know how I didn't predict that that was happening but that was very surprising very shocking and I thought that that was a really Really, really good like twist and reveal and yeah I just I really did like a lot of the ways things wrapped up and certain character stories came to an end. I do feel like there was a part of the ending that even though I found it satisfying it did feel a little rushed I guess maybe just like a little underwhelming in the way that it not the way that it happened but just how quickly things happened but overall I did really enjoy this I just think the pacing was a little off but I gave it four stars and very happy that I finished this book finished the series finally 
can finally check another series off my list because, you know, I've started so many. So very happy I finished another series as well. But that is the third book and prompt done for the Magical Readathon. I now have two left for the Star Whisperer career. So I definitely think with the two weeks left, I will be able to complete those things. And if you're participating in the Magical Readathon as well, I'd love to know your progress and how you're doing with the readathon so far. And if you are participating in the Magical Readathon, I would just love to know what you're currently reading. If you've read anything this month that you've really enjoyed, just let me know all the things. But I think that that is going to be it for my week two vlog for the Magical Readathon. So thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye!